It's sod's law that some of the simplest projects never turn out that way, just like this console table come desk. Oh, pants. And it all started with some rusty hairpin legs. Note to self, don't leave bare metal exposed in a workshop unless you put grease on it. Anyway, a quick disclaimer, I am an ambassador again this year for WD-40, and to make life easier, I used WD-40's Flexi Straw, sprayed all of the hairpin legs, and used some abrasive disc pads in my angle grinder to get rid of the bulk of the rust. But then I'd move on to a wire brush for the awkward angles, then wire wool, and what I found my favorite was scout pad, which is technically used for stripping paint off cars, which I bought as part of my mini restoration project. We won't talk about that. We won't talk about that. Now the plan was to paint them so they'd match with the decor of our house. And lots of people tend to tell me that you can't paint directly after using WD-40. But that's where the degreaser came in handy. So I sprayed liberally while outside, it's quite smelly, and used a lint-free cloth to remove all of the grime. For the paint, I'm often recommending using a direct to rust metal spray paint, but on this occasion, I'm just using what I had in my workshop, which was a plastic coat black primer. I probably bought it cheap off a of car boot. I just wanted to get rid of it. I built the coverage up over a few thin layers. However, a top tip I highly recommend is temporarily screw them to offcuts so you can spray them at all different angles and get them out of any rainy situations easily. Now we know. For the finished coat, again, using something that I had collecting dust, high coat black gloss, and I just gave it a couple of coats of that and left it to dry overnight. Now for the tabletop part, I had three oak planks that my dad had got cheap, although you could use softwood and have some cross cut braces underneath if you like. But these all had a curved edge and I wanted to butt them together, so I took them to my bandsaw to trim off the inner sections off. Measure twice, fail less often. <laughs> Anyway, something that I learned, and maybe you can explain why, is that the widest side of the plank, it cut straighter while that was facing up. Most of mine were now wonky, meaning I didn't have any straight edges as a reference. So I had to take them to the vise and clamp them in pairs and belt sand them to try and get them to match, which was easier said than done. I've had to put pencil references on either side and sand them in pairs. So if there's any discrepancies, they match each other. This has been really irritating. But once I felt like I had a lightness, I took them all to my crosscut saw to cut them roughly down to the same length. To join them all, I used my biscuit joiner. If you don't have that, you could simply just glue them and clamp them together, providing you've got some supports underneath. But my local DIY store didn't have any size 20 biscuits in stock. So I ended up buying the slightly smaller ones a size 10 knowing that I might have to add some supports underneath anyway and use a combination square to draw straight lines. You don't really have to do any measurements as long as they match, then cut the slots with a biscuit joiner. But if you don't have one of these, you could use a dowel jig and hardwood dowels like I'd shown you before in my DIY dog bed for hands. Anyway, when gluing, biscuiting and clamping any projects, I'm gonna give you a few key reminders here. Give yourself absolutely loads of time, more time than you think you'll need. Annoyingly, I get in the zone, forget about the time, and right now you can see my husband coming in here to remind me we've got to go out for an appointment. Do a bit of a dress rehearsal because you can never, ever have enough clamps. And don't rush it and use plenty of supports to keep the clamps straight so it doesn't bow while it's drying. And this is how I left it overnight. And although I've got planks underneath and on top with clamps, I still think I could have done with some more. And after unclamping it all, I didn't notice at this stage that there wasn't any bowing. Oh, pants. It's all right. It just needs sanding and, and filling some of the joins. It might not have even been completely dry at this stage. And I removed any of the dry glue that I could see with a bluntish chisel. But it wasn't until a few days that went by that I noticed there was a bow. So at this point I knew I'd be better off taking it to my dad's wood yard and using his plain thicknesser to straighten it out. Luckily, just by pure luck, it was wide enough for my tabletop. I started shaving it with the bow side up, give it a half turn, give it a few passes, then flip it over to shave off the other side. So yeah, make sure you take the time to glue and clamp it vigilantly. And I just about 
out and got rid of most of the bow but I couldn't do it all because I still needed enough thickness to allow for screws later then to take it to the radial arm saw to straighten off the two shorter sides. To fix the gappy joints that I still had I ran over it with some wood glue, make sure it dries clear, work it in with an old chisel or a filling knife, then go over it with a belt sander before it all sets so the sawdust would go in and it would dry at the same time. Note though I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle because if I just did it straight it's so easy to create unwanted dips and then be left with an uneven surface. And because it still had a bow, I was now forced to cut some support pieces. So by the time I glued and screwed them underneath, it would then nip it in straight. And that's not a look that I really wanted to go with this, but sometimes things don't go as you planned. But for this to work, I had to pre-drill the supports with a slightly larger drill bit than the screws I were gonna use, then glue and screw them on. So then it would pull it down and straighten it completely. Now I'm back to my workshop to tidy up all of the edges with a rounded router bit and then for the supports underneath I turned to my 45 degree chamfer router bit so it would be less visible. And when I came to mounting my hairpin legs I realised that the supports were just that little bit too shy so I had to put them on an angle and I used a centre punch. Thank you to Matt at Where's My Pencil for the tool recommendation, this is a really cool thing. And then pre-drilled and screwed them on. For the finish, I gave it a final hand sand and I just treated it with a wood preserver, to be honest. You could use whatever you wanted. But after learning quite a few mistakes on this project, would you rather buy one for 150 to 200 quid or take your time and make one anyway? I'm sure you know where I stand on that one.